Welcome back to Champions here at City Kids, or maybe this is your first time watching. If it is, thank you so much. We're super excited that you're here. Do watch through to the end because it is going to be packed with loads of fun stuff. We've got games, competitions, we've got a song, we've got amazing stuff about sports people and the Olympics, and it is going to be fantastic. You can join us every week here on a Sunday. Now, first of all, my joke for the week. Okay, here we go. This is my favourite one so far. Why did the golfer wear two pairs of trousers? It's because she got a hole in one. Get it, a hole in one? Oh, I love it. It's brilliant. I'm so sorry. Maybe it wasn't brilliant. Anyway, do you remember, some of you will remember that time when Jesus' disciples came up to Jesus and said, Hey, Jesus, it's amazing how you pray. We love watching you pray and we see the amazing things that happen when you pray. Could you teach us to pray like that as well? Do you know what he did? Well, one of the things Jesus talked about when we're praying is he said, pray like this. He said, God, forgive us our sins and we forgive people who've sinned against us. I bet you can all think of some times when people have sinned against you. When somebody said something or done something that was really mean, really horrible or made you feel awful. And actually, I think that happens quite a lot to everyone in life. And that's why Jesus was expecting that we would need to forgive people all the time. Just like, if we're honest, God forgives us all the time as well. And that's a really important part of our prayer. We're going to be learning a little bit more about that today. Before we do that, though, let's have a look at some of those amazing trophy models that you made last week. And we're going to pick out this week's winner. So your challenge last week was to make a really, really cool trophy, a little bit like the Euro 2020 trophy, maybe. So we've got four fantastic entries here. Uh, first of all, let's have a look at Anaya's one. She's made a cup here and she's decorated it with pipe cleaners and with sparkly paper and stickers and all kinds of stuff and made her number one winner's trophy. Well done. Uh, Sam has had a very similar idea, um, got some great stickers and things on there made his look really decorative. Well done, Samuel. And then we've got a couple of different kind of Lego ones. So first of all, Hudson has done this rather classy looking blue trophy. Well done, Hudson. And then a really cool design uh, from Joby, which he's done in Lego as well. Uh, really nice symmetry and everything going on in that one. So four fantastic efforts. Well done, all you guys. Now I've got my City Kids winner's bowl here. I'm going to give the names a little swish, and let's see who our winner's going to be this week. It is Anaya. So, well done to you, Anaya. I think I might be able to find your mum and dad around here somewhere. We'll fix you up with a great prize soon. Don't forget, you can enter our competition this week, so make sure you watch all the way to the end of City Kids to find out what it is. and welcome to your games challenge and we've got a great game for you this morning it is called egg slap and it is a head-to-head -head fast action game so um, Zach and I are gonna explain the rules and demonstrate it so what you need is you need a, a pot preferably a light one that can cover an egg or you can use a ball if you want to a small ball and that goes under your pot like that and the key is to take in turns slapping the pot and then one of you needs to try and remove the pot as fast as you can while the other one thinks it's still there and hits the egg so what you don't want to do is hit the egg otherwise your your opponent gets the point okay so Zach and I are gonna have a game do you feel like the champion Zach yeah me do oh, let's see right go oh Ready? 
Yep, I think I've definitely yeah, lost no. that game. <laughs> well, it is a lot of fun. And as I say, you can use an egg, you could use a ball, uh, but have lots and lots of fun with your challenge. Take care. Bye bye. 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 Hi everyone, this week's sign is from the book of Matthew, it's chapter 6, verse 12. Forgive the sins that we have done, just as we have forgiven those who did wrong to us. Hi everyone, today's sign is swimming. Should we try that all together? Today's sign is swimming, swimming. Why don't you have a go at that at home? Swimming. Today's star athlete is the swimmer Jessica Long. Jessica won her first Olympic gold medal at the age of 12, and was so successful that in one year alone, she broke 18 world records. Jessica competes for the USA, but she was born in Russia. She is a Paralympic athlete, which means she competes in the Paralympic Games, a competition especially for disabled competitors. She was born with a birth defect which means that she was missing all the bones in her legs. She is able to walk now, but only with prosthetic legs, which she takes off in the swimming pool. When Jessica was born, her mum felt that she wasn't able to look after her, so she put her up for adoption. An American couple quickly adopted her, knowing immediately that she was the girl God wanted them to care for. Despite having a loving family, Jessica grew up feeling angry about a lot of things. She felt angry that she wasn't the same as everyone else. And she felt angry at her birth mum for not looking after her. She always went to church and heard the message that God loved her. But she didn't believe it, and she didn't love herself. Jessica discovered that she was very gifted at sports, especially swimming. She really enjoyed winning, especially against girls who weren't disabled. After winning Olympic gold, she quickly became a star, appearing in lots of magazines and getting sponsored by Nike. But inside, she felt broken and sad. One day, she realized that she couldn't do it alone. She went to youth at church and told the youth leader, I want to give God my whole heart. The leader prayed with her, and for the first time she felt like she was actually a part of God's family. Whilst in London for Olympics, Jessica heard the news that someone had managed to find her birth family in Russia. A TV crew asked whether she wanted to go back and meet them for the first time. As soon as her plane landed in Russia, she started to feel scared. She thought, what if my family don't want to see me? Anger started to surface again. She was crying as she saw her birth mum for the first time. It was difficult not to feel angry at her. Jessica said, I think if I hadn't accepted Jesus Christ as my saviour, I wouldn't have forgiven her. But in that moment, Jessica realised that God had always forgiven her. So she should forgive her mum too. And she did. She had been angry her entire life, but now she let all the anger go. She said, in that moment I suddenly realised, God really had a plan this entire time. How about you? Why not ask God to bring to mind anyone that you need to forgive? Hi guys, it's Alice here from the City Kids team. Hope you're um, doing well today. So um, today's topic, we're talking about forgiveness. Um, so I'm going to start by reading a verse from Matthew um, 6, uh, chapter 6, verse 12. So if you've got your Bible, open up your Bible. If not, just listen along. So it says, and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. Or you might have heard that as um, forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. It's from the Lord's Prayer, which is a classic um, prayer. You may have heard before. If you haven't, look it up in your Bible afterwards and then get familiar with it. Um, it's a prayer that Jesus prayed. And um, it's really hard, isn't it? When someone has um, 
upset us, if they've done something wrong to us, if, if something unjust has happened and, and someone has wronged us, the natural reaction isn't to, um, to extend grace to them, is it? It's to, you know, feel resentment and actually to want to get revenge um, when someone's wronged us and hurt us. And, and that's our human nature and that, that's completely natural. What God says is that we need to forgive um, whatever someone's done to us however horrendous, hard, um, abusive, we, we do need to forgive them. And today we're going to discuss and be clear about what that means um, on a day-to-day -day -day basis. So we're going to just read from the Bible again. Um, so it's Matthew chapter, just bear with me, <laughs> chapter 18 um, and verse kind of 23, I think we'll start with. So this is a parable um, story that Jesus told to Peter, one of his disciples. Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he began to, as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay everything back. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other th servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the, the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? Yeah, so that's a really interesting story, isn't it? So in the story, the master is actually referring to God um and we are the first servant and then the next the other servant is the people we choose not to forgive um and god god's giving a really clear message there that actually he we, he's forgiven us so we need to forgive others so what what does that mean what does that entail so forgiveness is where you take that hurt and resentment that's in your heart and you give it to God and you say, God, I can't, I, I need to get rid of this. I need to take this out of me. Can you take it away? And what that doesn't mean, and I think sometimes it's been a bit unclear, is, is that you forget or that you, um, a person that you once trusted who then hurt you, wronged you, you then have to kind of fully trust again and let back into your life. And, you know, and that looks differently in, in every situation. What I would say is, though, that getting rid of that hurt and that resentment and that, that need to kind of, feel like you need to do something like get revenge on that person is, is a release is a good thing um but what we're not saying is that god wants you to just forget about it but he does want us to to give these the burdens to him um and release us from them um so the the uh, athlete we're going to learn about today um she had a really um difficult um, burden that she had to forgive and that was her parents giving um, her up for adoption when she was really young. I can't even imagine how hard that would be to process and, and come to that decision that you wanted to forgive them. Um, but yeah, we're going to hear more about her um, later on today. Um, and this isn't easy, this is, this is actually quite something quite hard that I think everyone really struggles with. Um, but my prayer for you today is that um, you can learn a bit more about why um, God wants us to do this and we can later on in the session pray about that and, um, and work through it together. Thanks guys. Come on.
on down All of his blessings they come around All of his blessings they come on down on me So one, two, three I'll sing and dance and jump around Cause my God knows my heart I'll laugh and run and praise him loud Cause my God knows my heart He knows my heart He knows my heart Come on down All of his blessings they come around All of his blessings they come on down on me Blessings they come, they come. All of his 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 blessings they want to pray. I'll see. Today's Olympic nation is Russia. It's a huge country. So huge that it would take 17 hours to fly across. It covers 11 time zones, and stretches all the way from Europe on one side, to near the coast of Alaska in the other. There's just about every kind of habitat imaginable in Russia, from thick forests, to icy deserts to giant marshes, not to mention the biggest lake on earth. Sport is incredibly popular in Russia. The favorite sport is football, but loads of other sports are played, like basketball, boxing, tennis and weightlifting. Russia is one of the most successful Olympic nations ever. They collected 19 gold medals at the last Olympics, and they've never been lower than fourth place in the medal table for an Olympics that they've competed in. No one knows for sure how the message of Jesus first arrived in Russia. But one legend says that Andrew, one of Jesus' twelve closest disciples, started a church in the city of Kiev, which is now part of Ukraine. We don't know for sure if this is true. But we do know that about 800 years later, Christians from Greece traveled to Russia. They translated part of the Bible into their language, and started telling people about Jesus. The church in Russia spread and grew over the centuries. In many ways this was good, allowing more people to read the Bible and hear about Jesus. But in other ways, it was actually a problem. The leaders of the country, and the leaders of the church, were often corrupt. The church became more and more rich and powerful, rather than helping people find forgiveness, and a relationship with God. That meant that millions of people were members of the church, but didn't really know Jesus. And the church often supported the country's leaders in the unfair decisions they made. In 1917, a big change came to the country. A revolution took place, and a communist government took over. 
they tried to stamp out all religions, not just Christians. This persecution forced true followers of Jesus to meet secretly, or face the danger of being killed or sent to a prison camp. Bibles were also banned. When this happened, Christians from Europe and America raised money to print millions of Bibles, to try and smuggle into Russia and the surrounding countries. People like Brother Andrew became secret Bible smugglers, crossing borders with cars loaded full of Bibles. Whenever they were stopped and searched by the guards, they would pray that God would make it impossible for the guards to see the Bibles. On many occasions, cars full of Bibles were thoroughly searched by armed soldiers, but miraculously they weren't able to see them. In 1991, the communist government fell, and Christians were able to worship more freely again. However, being a follower of Jesus in Russia can still be challenging. The government has recently made new laws, making it difficult to share the good news of Jesus. And once again, the main church in Russia often supports some of the corrupt and unjust policies of the government. Nevertheless, there are many bold Christians in the country, who are sharing their faith and planting churches. Christians are working together more than ever, and there is a big vision to see churches started in every town across this huge country. Pause the video and take a moment to pray for Russia. Pray that believers would have freedom to follow Jesus without persecution. And pray for those people who already go to church, but who don't have that personal relationship with God. Hey guys, um, so we're just going to unpack some of what we've spoken about today about forgiveness and um, to do that we're going we're gonna to pray um, and, and use kind of a more of a practical activity to signify that change. So I'd like you to grab a bit of paper, post-it note, you know, whatever's lying around really. Um, and on that bit of paper I'd like you to um, think of a person um, who's wronged you that you know deep down you haven't forgiven um, and I'm sure we can all think of someone um, so I just want you to write their name on the bit of paper um, and yeah if you need help with that just get your parents to help you that's absolutely fine and um, you don't necessarily need to write it if, if it's a struggle um, so so write it down in whatever form um, and I'm going to say a prayer after I've prayed what I'd like you to do is to rip your bit of paper up into tiny pieces and I want you to go and shuck it in the bin um, just to kind of throw it away and to signify actually you've given that 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 situation that person to God um, and yeah so I'm just gonna gonna sh say a short prayer now Father thank you that you send Jesus to die on the cross to forgive us for our sins and all the things that we do wrong day to day um, I pray now for all of us um, as we write on our piece of paper a person that has wronged us that has done something against us I pray father would you release us from that that um, that debt that feeling of, um, of, of bur being burdened by by that situation I pray that we would forgive that person on our piece of paper and that we could give it to you and that you would help us day by day to um, live in a state of forgiveness for that situation Thank you, Father, you are a merciful God, and you extend um, grace towards us. Thank you, in Jesus' name, Amen. Brilliant, so get your piece of paper, and I'm going to start ripping mine up. It feels good, it feels good, let it go, release it. And then, yeah, go and chuck that piece of paper in the bin. I'm going to make it snow. Woo! <laughs> um, thanks, guys. Hope you're having a great rest of your Sunday. Well, that is all from Champions for today. Don't forget, of course, Wales are playing Italy later on and then England have got the Czech Republic on Tuesday. So there's loads of exciting football to watch. It's going to be a nice, easy one uh, for our competition this week. What we want us, what you want you to do is send in a photo of you and your friends or your family enjoying watching the tournament. So maybe it's going to be a photo of you doing your best goal celebration or eating your favourite snacks with your family. Whatever you want to do, let's have those photos of you having loads of football fun. Send them in to us at the usual email address and we're going to pick out a winner next week. Hope you have an amazing time. We'll see you next week.